Hi, we're doing some more examples of using the law of cosines and Heron's formula. So we're given one now where the side lengths of triangle A, B, and C are 16, 30, and 34. And we're asked to determine how many triangles satisfy these conditions and to solve the triangles completely. So what we're given here is three side lengths. So that's a side, side, side situation. Um, because it's side, 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 it has a unique solution if it satisfies that check where each side is less than the sum of the other two. So if each side is less than the sum of the other two. So let's check that out for these three sides. Let's check if 16 is less than 30 plus 34. Well, that's certainly true. Is 30 less than 16 plus 34? Again, clearly true. And is 34 less than 16 plus 30? That's certainly true. So there is a unique triangle satisfying this these three lengths of sides. So let's try to find out what the angles would be in that triangle because we know what the side lengths are. So let me draw the triangle. Sixteen, thirty, and thirty-four. So I'm going to label an angle here. I'll label this angle C. And then we're going to use the law of cosines to find the, uh, the angles in the triangle. And that's why I started out by labeling angle C. Because I know the way I remember the law of cosines is with an angle C in it. Let me write that down. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of capital C. And so the way I've labeled angle C, that makes the opposite side, side lowercase c. And then these sides must be A and B here. And so I can fill everything into the law of cosines, and then I can solve for angle C. So I'll fill that in. 16 squared is equal to 30 squared plus 34 squared minus 2A is 30, B is 34 times cosine of capital C. So 16 squared is 256. 30 squared is 900. 34 squared is 1156. And 2 times 30 times 34 is 2040 cosine C. So the angles are a little bit messy here. Uh, I'm going to move cosine C over to the other side, and I get 2040 cosine C, cosine of capital C, is equal to 900 plus 1156 minus 256. So that's 1800, because we moved the 256 over to the other side. And so cosine of C is equal to 1800 over 2040. And so C is equal to arc cosine of that horrible fraction. I guess I could write it as 180 over 204 as a beginning of simplifying it. But I'm going to go ahead and plug that straight into my calculator. Um, One eighty divided by two oh four. And again, I'm using degree mode for this. You have to be careful because otherwise it'll give you an answer in radians. But that gives me an answer of about twenty eight point one degrees. So that fills in one of my triangles, one of my angles for my triangle there. Twenty eight point one degrees. So we've got one of the angles. We find the other two exactly the same way. Let me go ahead and work them out with you. I'm going to redraw my triangle. 16, 30, and 34. This was 28.1. We already figured that out. 
Now, the other two angles, in order to find the other two angles, what I'm going to do is, is draw angle C in a different place now. So I'm relabeling which angle is which. The point of that is that I don't have to rewrite my law of cosine switching around the A, B's, and C's there. So this time, I'm going to draw my angle C there. And so that makes side C is the one opposite. And A and B are the ones next to it. And again, I'll write down my law of cosine. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of capital C. And I'll work through and I'll solve for capital C. So, so that says 30 squared is equal to 16 squared plus 34 squared minus 2 times 16 times 34 cosine of capital C. And now it's just a little algebra to simplify this. 900 is equal to 256 plus 1156. Now 2 times 16 times 34 is 1,088. And we still have cosine of capital C. So again, I want to simplify this. I'm going to move the cosine C term over to the other side. 1088 cosine of capital C is equal to 256 plus 1156 minus 900, because I'm going to move the 900 over. And that simplifies down to 512. So cosine of capital C is 512 over 1088. And I'll take the inverse cosine of that on my calculator. And I get 61.9 degrees, approximately. So that's 61.9 degrees. So that tells me one more of my angles. I've only got one to go. I could find the third angle by adding up the first two and subtracting from 180. But I think I'd like to practice the law of cosines again. And then at the end, we can use that adding up to 180 as a check that we did the law of cosines right. So we're going to find the third angle by using the law of cosines again. And in order to use my law of cosines with the same a, b, and c in the formula, I'm going to rotate the a, b, and c on the triangle. So I'm going to cross out my old a, b, and c. And I'll relabel the angle that I don't know as capital C, which means its opposite side is 34, is, is lowercase c. And so a and b are now the two sides next to it. And again, I'll plug into the law of cosines to solve for capital C. So c squared is 34 squared is equal to a squared is 16 squared plus b squared is now 30 squared minus 2 times 16 times 30 times cosine of capital C. So 34 squared is 1156. 16 squared is 256. And 30 squared is 900. 2 times 16 times 30 is 960, cosine c. And now an interesting thing happens because I'm going to subtract 256 plus 900 from both sides. And that's equal to exactly 1156. So what I get is 0 is negative 960 cosine c. And if I divide by negative 960, I get cosine c is equal to 0. So what angle has cosine 0? Well, that's exactly a right angle. So C is exactly a 90 degree angle. So let me fill that one in. So actually, we could have noticed that this was, in fact, a right triangle because 16 squared plus 30 squared is equal to 34 squared. Um, it doesn't matter. Remember, the law of cosines works in all triangles. So it works just as well in right triangles as in other triangles. But of course, the rules for right triangles, Sokotoa, those don't work in other triangles. So now we've solved the triangle completely. We've got all three sides, and we've got all three angles. But I want to check and see if those three angles actually do add up to 180 degrees. So as a check here, I'll look at 28.1, the first angle I solved for, 
plus 61.9 plus the last angle was 90. And if you add those together, you do indeed get 180 degrees, which means we must have done the problem right. So let's just recap what we did there. We were given a side, side, side presentation of a triangle. So the first thing we did was check that each one of those sides was less than the sum of the other two. If that check hadn't worked out, we would have stopped right there and said there's no such triangle. But that check did work out, and so then we go on to using the law of cosines to find the angle of, of to find each of the angles of the triangle. So we take the law of cosines here, and we fill in the lengths of the three sides, and then we solve down to find the cosine of a missing angle, and then we can, once we know the cosine of the missing angle, we can use our cosine to find the angle itself. We did that three times, just applying it to each angle in turn. We got each of the three angles, and then we checked at the end that they added up to 180.